So I took a short trip down memory lane. I, you know, downloaded the division one. I logged in and I went to look at this little, you know, banner and uh, the poster that the developers put within the division one game after the first ETF. And I just, you know, it really hit me how much and how far the division franchise has come. And it's been a a work of the, I would say, the complementary nature of the developer slash player community feedback that's grown the game to what it is today. Now, the Division 2 is largely being the, dev the developers making a lot of the decisions and trying to drive the game their own way. And that's why you see where we are today. But with the ETF uh, program coming up and, you know, already here or whatever it is, I wanted to just, you know, quickly look at some things that really made the Division 1 quite special. And first of all, in this video, all I'm going to look at is the Dark Zone from the Division 1 compared to the Dark Zone in the Division 2. Now, first of all, let's put this out there. The Dark Zone idea was actually a very, very, in my opinion, unique idea, regardless of whether it worked or regardless of whether it was something that was enjoyed by the community. It was definitely one of those ideas that was actually implemented the way that it was implemented that did stand out. And for that, I give props to the developers. There is no way that anyone could have envisioned that this would be a very popular idea. And even the way the mechanics work are unique to the division itself. And then number two, the implementation of the Dark Zone in the Division 2 has been a shift away from the Division 1. And the only thing I can say and the arguments that I can reduce, you know, why the PvP community pretty much abandoned the Division 2 is just two major things. And these two major things are things that the developers are aware of and whether or not they're going to make the changes is yet to be seen. Some people are saying that the changes are going to come, that they're very confident, but their NDA is all over the place. But these two things are very, in my opinion, simple. They're not things that the development team are not experienced in doing. In fact, the first one is the map size. Now, if you look at both Dark Zones in the Division 1 and the Division 2, both environments are actually very well designed. They're some of the most beautifully designed uh, PvP environments that I have seen in any game I've played. I don't know, I've not played too many games, but so far I can almost even make a case that the Division 2 has a much more beautifully designed Dark Zone than the Division 1. And then at the same time, even though I may add that argument to the whole plate, I still have to, in some sense, say, but the Dark Zone in the Division 1 is the best Dark Zone because it has the story and the lore actually embedded into it in the sense that you see a very grim picture. It's dark. There are all these, you know, the excess of the grim world, the green poison has decimated the population. And you see all these contaminated areas that are all over this Dark Zone. So at the same time, it's the same development design team that has made both Dark Zones, and they're actually well executed from an aesthetic standpoint. If you take the Dark Zone in the Division 1 and the Division 2 and show it to anybody that's into design or world design, they will all tell you these are two beautiful worlds. The only weird problem is that the Division 2 has a Dark Zone that is void of what it needs, and that is players. No one is in the Division 2's Dark Zone much. Now, why is that the case? It's very simple. A lot of the PvP community has asked that the developers please consider implementing a bigger map for the Dark Zone. So, some have even said they can take DZ East and DZ South and put it toward DZ West, or take DZ West and DZ South, put it towards DZ East, or take DZ East and DZ West and put it towards DZ South. Just add an extended map area that's playable for players and increase the number of players that are within them. Very simple solution. Now, you may wonder, but would that not entail for a map redesign? Well, it's not something that the developers have not done. If you look at this area called Pairs North in the Division 1, that was an extended area that the developers actually made as a secondary aspect of the game. Towards uh, the end of life of the game, they developed this area that had all these, in a sense, raid-type 
uh, activities that you could do there. They weren't raids, but, you know, there were these little missions we went in there for and we went against waves of enemies, opened some, you know, exclusive chests for rewards. And so this is something that we've seen the developers do. So when it comes to actually tweaking the map, it's not something that is uncommon for them. Because if you look at the Dark Zone map for the Division 1, that is a very huge Dark Zone. In fact, they added to the Dark Zone in the Division 1. So two map updates were made in the Division 1 game in the sense of adding uh, new areas to it. So that is not something that is uh, you know, far-fetched for the development team to do. But I think the second problem is the one that we have not really seen the development team do, and that is a in a sense, change of a lot of the systems within the game. Now, not necessarily the, de the developers need to go ahead and overhaul all the skills and everything within the Division 2. They can still keep the Division 2 to have its unique identity. But there is something that is still missing in the sense of the skill trees and the player ability. And that's the fact that the tools are quite limited. So if you look at the Division 1 skill tree, it's filled with tools for the player to actually use. But in the Division 2, on the other hand, those tools seem to have been, in a sense, slimmed down. And so the player is looking left and right for ways for him or her to be able to overcome the difficult aspects of the game. Now, yes, we can understand that they were probably trying to prevent a lot of abuse of skills within PvP but it still is not an excuse to have reduced a lot of the tools that we had in the division one and then bring the division two into the division two a lot of the foreign type skills that we see or skills that are pretty much a nerfed version of what we've had from the division one an example of a very good tool for a solo player was the support station but this was taken away from the division two in uh, in and was substituted for a hive that you only have to equip one mod in order for you to be able to gain the benefits. Whereas in the division one, your support station could carry out some of the same benefits of some of the other uh, support station mods, but then you have some slight limitations. But if you notice with the hive system that we have, you have a damage version and then you have a healer version and then you have a booster version. And so everything seemed to have been somewhat muddled up and the players feel like they're somewhat weaker in that sense. Now, an overhaul for little things like this will be very wise for the for the developers to actually put into place. And hopefully we're looking towards, you know, a situation where when they're bringing out title update six or future updates or even our episode uh, two or three, when we're returning back to New York, they can use this as an opportunity to just bring back everything that we've had from the division one. Now, there will be probably separate maps, and I guarantee you people will be happy to go back to New York map and play New York in the original form that it was. This, in my opinion, will be a much simpler solution than overhauling the entire game itself. Because, sure, you might say, well, how are they going to do that in respect to the entire game? Well, if you travel to New York... They can always make the lore go where you're going to New York and you probably will go and have access to the base of operations and to the gear, the weaponry and the technology that is available in New York. This is one way to make the lore actually fit in to something like that. Also, modes like survival, underground and all those things could be revisited and they can always use those same assets that they've had from the Division 1 to implement them in the Division 2. So... That's my trip down memory lane. I know you probably have your trip down memory lane once in a while. You always look and say, I remember when I played the division and I had my classified gear sets and all these things that we've wished for that currently in the current build of the division two, it's almost impossible to get them without a complete overhaul of the game. But down the road, there's an opportunity for the developers to be able to bring all these things that the community has been asking for. And my hope is that they're able to bring these things back. I am absolutely committed to playing this game. Now, I'll be playing other games as usual. I mean, I'm a gamer, but I will be very elated. And I'm sure a huge number of the community, especially the entire Division 1 community that came to the Division 2, 
will be extremely happy to see these things take place. Anyways, that's all I have for today. Thank you very much for your time and your audience. Thank you for listening to the video, and I guess I'll see you in the next video. Peace.